this video we'll be showing you how to install KevTrich's HDMI mod into an AV Famicom. If you don't know what this mod does, it directly interfaces with the CPU and PPU chips of an NES slash Famicom console, bypassing the console's RF or composite video out, so you get a real digital output for modern TVs, plus other built-in functions. The mod currently supports US, Japan, and PAL consoles of the NES front loader, Model 2 top loader, and the Model 2 AV Famicom. The mod installation isn't plug and play, you're going to need some soldering skills. Be comfortable handling electronics, and you'll also need to cut a hole for the HDMI port. Tools you're going to need are an NES Famicom security bit, a screwdriver, a pen, soldering iron, solder, desoldering gun or desoldering braid, solder flux, a file, wire stripper, and something to cut or drill plastic out. I'm using this Exolite low profile cutter and an X-Acto like knife. You'll also need to print out the whole template from Game Tech's US's website. Links will be in the description. Remember to set your printer to borderless mode so that the template isn't shrunk down. For early versions of the mod board, you might need to also cut one end of the HDMI cord's plastic protection because the HDMI port is one millimeter slightly in and the cable may not get a proper connection. This was only for the first 200 sold. Later releases will be correcting this. To start, unplug the console, then put the power switch in the on position. This makes the capacitors discharge and keeps the console safe. Make sure you keep yourself grounded with an anti-static wristband, mat, or something grounded to touch. Open up the console and put away the RF shielding parts. The HDMI components won't allow them to be put back in. Use a camera to make it easier to remember where the screws go. Next is going to be the painful part of cutting the hole into your system. The HDMI mod uses the composite mounting post to anchor onto the bottom. You'll need to cut out a section of the inner rib. It doesn't have to be perfect since this is inside. Just mark the area and snap it off like so. For the outside part, use your X-Acto knife. Cut grooves on both sides and slowly slice the plastic off till you get to the end of your outline. Then flush cut the HDMI port pins on the bottom so that the board fits flat. Repeat the same cutting process with the top part of the rear panel. Use your file to even out the edges if needed. Test fit the board and then make sure nothing is touching. The next part is to desolder the CPU and PPU chips from the console board. You can add solder to the pins so that it'd be easier to remove them if they give you any problems. Make sure all the pins are free and never pull hard on the chips. You don't want to rip off any of the board's vias or traces. Also, make sure you don't use the soldering gun for too long. You don't want to heat damage the chips. Next, put the sockets on the chip, cut them to length, then place the chip back onto the board and solder down all the pins. Repeat for the other chip. At this point, you should check if the console still works. You can test the console while it's open. After all that, you'll need to desolder the console's voltage regulator, the 7805. It's the chip that's screwed onto the heatsink. Just desolder it and rotate it up. You can leave the heatsink and 7805 inside the console. The HDMI board will be used to control the system's power from now on. GameTech US offers to pre-assemble the inner posers for $5 extra, so you can skip most of the CPU and PPU mini board's assembly part. If you choose to do the work yourself, take the sockets again and cut them to length like last time, then place the chip on the outer pins for the PPU and solder it down. Then place the double-sided sockets onto the main board connectors and solder them to the inner pins of the mini board. Repeat the same process for the CPU mini board, but flip the socket placement. Double-sided on the upper holes, chip sockets on the lower. Now take the 28 gauge white wire and solder to the left and middle holes of the 7805. The middle hole is ground, the left hole is power. Just mark one of them so you remember which is what. Solder the wires to the 5 volt and ground pads of the HDMI board. Pull the ribbon connector tabs out and insert the cable, the word side facing down from you. Mount the mini boards onto the console's main board, flip the main board over, and connect the corresponding ribbon to the HDMI's ribbon ports. Put the foam spacer on top of the large chip. This will keep the back end of the HDMI board from moving. Place the console's board back onto the bottom and make sure none of the wires get crushed. Screw it down and do a final test.
everything is all good, finish closing up the console and your NES slash Famicom system will now work through HDMI. Thanks again for watching. I hope this helped you out on assembling the HDMI mod. You can also check Game Tech US's own installation video. The mod can be purchased at Game Tech's website. And also check out Game Tech and Kevtris's YouTube channels if you enjoy installing mods and seeing the guts of electronics.